In today's tutorial, we're learning four ways to use mockups in PowerPoint to use your images, your visuals, and your screenshots in a more creative way. Let's start with the first one, which is using a phone mockup. And this one is really helpful if you want to show some screenshots from your phone or your app. And here we've used a iPhone as a placeholder for the content. You could use it for any type of images, drawings, screenshots. You're really free to use it however you want. And for this one, we're starting from Unsplash. And if you go to Unsplash, you can type in, for example, phone mockup. And then if you want to select only horizontal or landscape images, you can do that here. And that way you filter down on all the images that you want. You can see there's multiple images available, so you can pick whichever one fits your brand guide the most. There's ones with backgrounds, there's one with more minimal aesthetic, and there's ones with different color backgrounds. You can really choose whatever you want. I'm going for this one with the more minimal aesthetic, and I'm going to download it. Let's jump back into PowerPoint, and I'm going to drag this image right into place, and I use the designer tab to make sure that it fills the entire screen. The next thing we want to do is we want to cover this area here with a rectangle or the shape to cover the phone. So for that, we're going to use a rounded rectangle, make it about the same size as the phone, and then we're going to rotate it so that we can cover the screen. So let's rotate it just a bit more. There we go. And then we extend it so it meets the bottom. And then you can hold control and scroll forward to zoom in. You can adjust the roundness of the corner so that it roughly covers the screen of the phone. Let's remove the outline and make it white and then scroll backwards outwards again. And this way we have added a shape on top of the phone which represents the screen. And now we can start working with this. You can, if you want, add that little extra shape to match the phone exactly, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to use this basic shape as an example. Now what we can do with this is we can format it. So let's go right click format. And here we can give it a different gradient fill if we want. And then you can add some text to the, to the phone. Let's say sign, sign in, change this text to Avenir next, make it white, rotate it with the shape. And then you can place it here. You can add whichever text that you want to replicate your app, or you could also use this shape to insert images. And for that, I'm going to drag an image on the slide. I'm going to make sure that it covers more than the phone. And I'm going to control X or right click and cut it. Select the shape. And now we're going to this picture or texture fill. And I use clipboard. And this way we paste the picture that was on our clipboard. So now we select the tile picture as texture. And that way it will nicely match the shape. And the image will fill that form that we have selected as the screen. So if we select this again, we can play around with the settings So the offset. That means how much the image shifts to the right or the left outside of the screen. So let's say we put this on zero is the left side of the image. We put this on 250 is the right. So it's probably somewhere in between minus minus 300 to match that center of the slide. So you can choose whichever part of the image that you want. And this really works with whatever image that you have. So if you have a different image on your clipboard and you want to add that to your phone, you can just put it on the clipboard, select the shape, go to fill, clipboard, and that way it will modify. So you can click that picture as style to change it to whatever you want. This really works well with screenshots or applications, mobile websites that you want to demo. So it's a nice way to do it instead of just putting the image on the slide, it's kind of nice to integrate it into the picture. Now that brings us to mockup number two, which is going to be a laptop mockup. And in this example, we've used a laptop as a placeholder for the images, a mockup for the images, so that we pretend that our content is actually on the laptop in just, instead of just being on the slide. And for that, we're going back to Unsplash. And instead of a phone mockup, let's type in a laptop and see what we get laptop would it be of course and then let's see this already gives us quite a few nice laptops that we could use and maybe for the sake of this tutorial to make it realistic let's say we want to take this one where the laptop is in a slight angle so there's also a trick that we could use for angles of screens or for screens that are positioned in an angle so let's download this one in large let's create a new slide delete the content and drag the image on top of the slide 
fill it to full screen. Let's maybe center it just a little bit higher. There we go. Now there's a similar technique that we could apply, but sometimes it's easier to use this shortcut. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a rectangle, drag it from the top left corner to the bottom right corner of the screen. We're going to remove the outline and for the sake of this tutorial, let's make it purple so we can easily see what we're doing. Edit points and we're going to connect the right top corner to the right side of the screen and the bottom left of the rectangle to the bottom left of the screen. You can hold control and scroll to zoom in a bit further and let's make sure that we go over the edges so that we don't have the screen visible on any any sides. There we go. What we're going to do now is we're going to select the background image, hold shift and select the rectangle that we've created or the shape. Go to the format shape tab, merge shapes and subtract. And this way we have created a clean cutout of that screen. Let's position it back. And now we can use any type of image that we want to drag on the screen and put it behind the screen. So let's make it a little bit smaller and send it to back. Of course, this already doesn't look too bad, but if we were to add some text on this picture, it would give a little bit of a distorted effect. So what we can do for that is we right click format picture, go to 3D rotations and 3D format. And here we can select some of the presets that would perfectly match or almost match the angle of the screen. So in the perspective guide, this one will already look better. And then with the buttons that we have here, we could sort of adjust it so that it matches the screen nicely. Now for a more realistic example, let's drag in a screenshot of, for example, the New York Times that we want to put. It could be your website, it could literally be anything. Remove the image in the background. Now let's send this to back and you can see if we put it like this, it looks a bit weird and distorted. So for that, we have the format picture perspective and now we're going to look for the right perspective so that it matches the screen perfectly. So play around with the Z rotation. This one was correct. The Y rotation to see if you need to change anything. But in this case, it's mainly going to be the X rotation and we rotate it until it matches the screen and until it looks somewhat realistic. There we go. This would already look quite good. Let's preview what we have. And this is just a little bit of a nicer touch to show your pictures, show your website, instead of just adding a blank image to the slide or a boring image to the slide, you can integrate it with a nice picture. Now that brings us to mock-up number three, which is going to be a notebook or a paper that we want to use. And of course, also for this one, we're jumping back into Unsplash and let's type in open note book see what we can find and here you can see all different variations of notebooks and papers that we could use so here again you can find whichever one fits your style best i'm going for this minimal design looks quite nice and download it in large and jump back into powerpoint let's right click new slide remove the content and drag in the image of the notebook put it on full screen and let's crop increase it just a little bit so everything is nicely positioned now what we could do here to be more creative let's say you want to remind people to take notes during the lecture during your classroom or whatever and you don't just want to say it you want to mention it on a slide you could do it with adding a nice notebook picture let's add a text and then we write in don't forget to take notes exclamation mark increase the size this looked quite cool it sort of matches with the image and then with the drop down menu you can change the font to anything handwritten for example now this is actually a nice reminder for people to take notes during the presentation or you could really use any call to action that you want now to make it a little bit more realistic i'm going to change the opacity of the text maybe first the color to make it a little bit lighter somewhere in between would be good and then we can change with the transparency so that it looks more realistic. There we go. Of course, depending on the style that you want, there's multiple handwritten fonts and each one kind of has their own vibe to it. This Autodex is more of a graffiti type style. And let's see what else we can find. This scribble effect maybe looks most realistic with the pen. So there's all different styles that you could, you could play around with. 
something freestyle script. There we go. So all different styles for you to play around with. You can really choose anything you like from that font selection menu. I kind of like this one because it's fairly easy to read for people and it doesn't distract too much. So it's a very simple technique, but it's yet again, it's a clever way to do something different with your slides. And that brings us to the last one, and it's the number four of the mockups. And we've kind of saved the best for last, because this is the billboard mockup. Using this effect, you generate the illusion that you are looking at a billboard. And as soon as you click, you can actually move the content on the billboard and you can add as much as you want to customize to your slides. And also for this one, we could start from Unsplash and you could look for billboards and this will give you a ton of billboards to work with. So you can do some large ones, you can do some vertical ones. There's endless of pages that you could use to use billboards. Now, next to Unsplash, there's also this site called FreePick where you can look for other different billboard animations or any sort of pictures, graphics on this slide. Some of them are premium with the paid account, some of them are free or you have to attribute to the creator. So make sure to read the licenses. So there's multiple options available. You can really choose one that fits your style. Once you found one that you like, you jump back into PowerPoint and let's create a new slide, remove everything. And then you paste the image. Let's scale it to full screen. There we go. And what we're going to do here is a very similar effect to the phone. So we're going to start off with a rectangle that covers the screen, no outline, and let's make it white. Maybe instead of white, let's use three shades of purple to make a clear distinction. We're going to increase the size just a little bit more. And now we're going to create duplicates. So hold control and drag to create a second selection, paste it below the previous one, hold control, and do that once more. And we're going to give each of these slightly a darker tint. That way we have three different posters that we could use. Now let's add some text. And for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to name it one, two, three, change the font to white. I'll zoom in a bit, increase the font size, center it in the middle, make it bold, and then position it in the middle of your graphic. I'm going to copy this to the second one here. Of course, it becomes number two and then we drag it down again and here it becomes number three. I'm going to group them together. It's not necessary, but it's just easier to work with. So we have three different objects. What we want to do now is we're going to group those together as well so that we have one line that we could move to the top or to the bottom. Now we want to select this background image, Ctrl C, Ctrl V to create a duplicate. And we're going to crop this in a pretty convenient way. So we're going to crop everything downwards until the bottom of the panel is reached. Now, if we click, we can see that we can shift, that we can shift this upwards and you only see it appearing from behind. So it kind of looks like the content on the board is moving. Of course, you can see that at the top, we have to do the same. So Ctrl C, Ctrl V and create a third layer, crop and adjust the crop marks so that it meets the top of the board. And now what we have to do is we have to duplicate the slide. And on the second slide, we move the content so that number two is visible. And we do that once more for number three. There we go. Now we're going to add the morph transition to the slides and let's preview what we have. And here we can see a billboard outside. And as soon as you click, it will shift to the second part. Once you click again, it will click to the third part. So this is the concept that you could do. Now, if you want to modify the content, that is also pretty easy. Let's do that for now. So I'm going to delete those slides, delete this again. So we still have the slide or the framework with the two parts at the bottom and the top to cover everything. Now let's drag some images into the screen and let's fit those to the slide. So let's start with this one, I'm going to position it right here, crop it, and then we crop it so that it meets the border of the panel so that it nicely fits the panel. Let's do the waterfall in the middle. I'm going to paste the other one on top, position it here, scale it down and then adjust the crop marks so that we can nicely position it at the same height or it's the same size at least. And then let's do the same for the other one. 
positioned here. Crop. Adjust the crop marks. There we go. Make it a bit smaller. Choose a nice angle of the image. This one, for example. And then position that one to the bottom. So we create three images in a row. We group them together. This could be anything. It could be a poster design. It could be a graphic design. It could be a picture. That doesn't really matter. Now we select these bottom and top and bottom banner. Right click. Bring to front. And then we duplicate the slide. Shift the images to the top. Duplicate once more. And then we have the nice morph effect. And let's see what we have created. Now, personally, I really like this style of image because it's very unexpected. So if you use this in a slide in the presentation and you click, you can actually move the image on the screen. And once you click again, you can move it to the third slide. Now I've done it with images. You can easily do it with text, with images, combination of anything. The freedom is yours and the creativity is there. So use it wisely and stun your audience. As a little recap, in today's tutorial, we have seen four ways to use the mockups in PowerPoint, with the first one being the phone mockup to use any screenshots, any applications, or show images in a nicer way. Secondly, we have seen how to use the laptop as a mockup to show some websites or other content that you would like to show in a creative way. Thirdly, we've looked at the paper effect or the notebook effect where you could write some things on a mockup. And lastly, maybe my favorite effect, which is the billboard effect. And once you click on it, you can actually add some cool content to it. Of course, this also applies to the phone or the other mockups that we've seen. You can really be creative here. Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about PowerPoint, please watch the video on the screen right now.